we'll look at now a lesson on standard deviation. Now this is a measure of how widespread a set of scores is from its mean. And the symbol for standard deviation, well it looks like, uh, it looks like an O with a, a little hat if you like. Okay, or the other one, same symbol but instead of a little N, have a little X next to it. So that's our standard deviation symbol. You'd be looking for that sort of symbol on your calculator when it comes time to do that. Now in a normal distribution, in a normal distribution where the score and frequency is labelled, if we draw a curve, if we just consider that curve now, it would be known as a bell curve. So in a normal distribution we come up with that bell curve. And if we consider an example where the mean is 60. Now recall the mean, the symbol for mean is that X with a, a bar across it. That's the mean. So we have a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of 10. Well from the bell curve the mean will be right in the middle. So there's our mean. And the standard deviation of 10, well let's have a look at how we, we're going to come up with a couple of results, in fact three results, using the standard deviation. If we jump up one standard deviation, in other words, if we go up by 10, we'd be up to the score of 70. Now from 60, if we go down 10, go down one standard deviation, we'd be down to 50. And the first result we're going to look at is that there would be 68% of scores lie between 50 and 70. So that's our first result. 68% of scores would lie between 50 and 70. Now I didn't do any sort of calculation there. Okay, that's a known result, that's 68%. Our second look, okay, our standard deviation is 10. This time if we jump up two standard deviations. So from 60 going up 10, 60 to 70 to 80. And if we jump down two standard deviations, so from 60 going down by 10, so at 60, then we go down 50, then to 40. That's two jumps either way. Now our second result is we'd find that 95% of scores would lie between 40 and 80. 95%. Once again, that is a result. Third and final result, consider the standard deviation of 10. This time jump up three lots of 10. That would take us up to a score of 90. If we go down three lots of 10, we'd be down to 30. And this time, final result, we'd find that 99.7% of students scored between 30 and 90. 99.7%, nearly the whole population. Right, in summary then, there's our mean. The X with a bar across it indicates our mean. Our standard deviation, there are our symbols for that. Now if we, if we jump up and down one standard deviation either way, 68%. 68% of scores lie in that range. There's our bell curve again. Mean in the middle. If we jump up two standard deviations up to the right, two standard deviations down to the left, 95%, that's our second result, 95% of students or scores will lie in that range. We'd also say that your score would very probably lie within this range. So that very probably is a phrase that you'd have to remember. Third and final result, there's our mean in the middle. If we go up three standard deviations, go down three standard deviations, then 99.7% of scores lie within that range. That is nearly all of the scores, isn't it? It's nearly 100% of the scores. So that we would therefore say that you would almost certainly lie within that range. Almost certainly. Okay, let's look at our first example. We're given that 200 students at a school were weighed. Their mean mass was found to be 57 kilograms with a standard deviation of 10 kilograms. And firstly we're asked to find the percentage of students with a mass between 47 kilos and 67 kilos. Now our mean mass was 57. We'll jot our important information down. Standard deviation was 10. And in each of these examples we're going to draw a bell curve. So we mark in our 57. Now our standard deviation is 10. Now if we add 10, 
we come up with 67. If we subtract 10, we come up with 47. And that's what we're interested in in this example, the percentage of students within that range. Okay, now if we've just gone up and down one standard deviation, our result is 68%. So there would be 68% of students who weigh somewhere between 47 and 67. So there's our answer, 68%. Next question. Find the percentage of students with a mass between 37 and 77 kilos. So once again, draw a new bell curve. Our mean is in the middle. Standard deviation 10. If we go up twice, we'll come up with 77. If we go down two lots of 10, we'll go down to 37. And once again, okay, keeping an eye on what we're being asked, that corresponds with the figures now on the bell curve. So two standard deviations either way indicates our 95% result. So 95% of students would have a mass somewhere between 37 and 77 kilos. Question C. The mass required is between 27 and 87. So once again, a new bell curve, 57 marked in the middle. If we go up, uh, there's our standard deviation of 10. If we go up this time three lots of 10, that'll take it up to 87. If we go down three lots of 10, we'll take it down to 27, which again corresponds with what we're being asked. So remember, three standard deviations each way indicates that 99.7%. So 99.7% of students would have a weight somewhere between 27 and 87 kilos. Question D. This time, the percentage of students with a mass greater than 57. Draw our curve, bell curve, marked in 57 in the middle. Now we're interested in them having a mass greater than 57. So looking at that, that's what it would look like. And what percentage, I haven't, marked, I haven't told you about these percentages, but what percentage would you think that might be? Well, it's exactly 50%, it's exactly half. So in a bell curve, exactly half lie to the right of the mean, and similarly, exactly half would lie to the left if we were asked that. So our answer there is 50% have a mass greater than 57 kilos. The next one, how many, or what percentage of students have a mass greater than 67 kilos? Well, let's draw our diagram. Now to get to 67 kilos, Standard deviation is 10. It would indicate a jump of 10 to the right. That'll take us up to 67. And if we're going one to the right, go one to the left, because that indicates our 68%. All right, one either way. But we're interested in the mass being greater than 67 kilos, which I'll shade in there on the diagram. So we've got to, we work, we have to work out what percentage of students would lie in that group. Well, it'd be the same exactly on the other group, on the other side. If we used up 68% in the middle, you can see there's going to be 32% left on the outside. 68% in the middle used up, 32% left on the outside, split up evenly, 16-16. So to answer our question, the percentage then that have a weight greater than 67 kilos would be 16%. Question F. Find the percentage of students with a mass between 37 kilos and 67 kilos. Well, there's our bell curve. Standard deviation is 10. So to get to 37 kilos, how do we get down there? We need to jump twice. To get to 67 kilos from our mean, we need just to jump once. So it's a, it's a little bit, uh, it's not symmetrical this time. We need to uh, firstly draw a line down the middle there. If we consider this section here firstly, well that was the two standard deviations idea, well that indicates the 95%, but we didn't go the whole way did we? We didn't go two either way, we just went two one way. And of course what we'd do then is halve that, so that would indicate 47.5% being half of 95. The next one we're interested in is the one standard deviation. All right, when we think one standard deviation, we should be thinking 68%. But that's only if we go one standard deviation both ways. We're only going one way. So we'll halve that 68, 
and we get 34%. So at this stage we've got our percentages we need. We just need to add the two together. So add the two together and we come up with 81.5%.